The Holy Gospel according to John. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the spirits descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? Jesus said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Our gospel reading this morning celebrates the act of following. We celebrate being a follower. The most active characters in this reading do not, not much more than point at Jesus and they walk behind him. In the most basic sense, they follow. This seems like an odd thing to celebrate. We don't celebrate followers. Parents and adults have phrases in our vocabulary to caution against our children becoming followers. We say, I want you to be a leader, not a follower. Or if our child comes home from school and says to us, yeah, I did it. All my friends were doing it. We have, a, of course, a good phrase ready. If your friends jumped off of a bridge, would, would you? We do not celebrate followers. We associate following with such terrible words as weak, dependent, passive. And we've built our culture on the opposite. We're independent, strong, free, we're active. We do not celebrate followers, we celebrate leaders. And so this morning, the fact that to be a Christian is to be a follower, I think, poses a challenge for us. We have to make sense to a world that looks down on following why we think it is good. And this is going to become, as time goes on, this is, I think, going to become harder and harder to explain or justify why it's good to be a follower. Because our, the times we live in, this age, is one of maximum creativity and action. With technology and social media, there's always something to do, to create, to change. And if we are labeled as followers, as passive, 
we may become irrelevant. And so this morning, we're going to rehabilitate this word follower. We're going to reclaim it, reclaim it as something good. And we have help in the gospel reading because these key characters seem to follow with joy, with livelihood. And so we're going to rehabilitate this word and figure out why it was being a follower, for them, not a mark of shame or embarrassment, but the best thing that they could do so that we, like these first century followers of Jesus, might be proud to follow as well. That's what we're going to try to figure out this morning, to reclaim this word of follow. Now, one way we might reclaim this word is, and put a positive spin on being a follower, is we may think about someone who we followed in our life, a leader who we followed. And we may remember that their leadership built us up, that their leadership was not for themselves to make them feel better, for their power, but to lift us up, someone who poured into us and encouraged us and built us up. And John's gospel, the first chapter of John's gospel, is to tell this part of our story of a God who leads entirely for the purpose of building us, God's people, up. God, as presented in John's gospel, is continually giving God's power away. And it begins with creation. The opening words of John's gospel we heard after Christmas, that in the beginning was the word, and nothing came into being without him. This world was created for us. God saw this formless void and said, I want helpers. I want to share my power with you. And so we were created out of love in the image of God as creators with God, followers with power. Now we've abused this freedom that God, this power that God gave us, yet God does not give up on us. God creates a people, Israel, and gives them a land that they can be stewards over. God gives them some suggestions, some laws to live by. Laws which again we break, freedom that we abuse. But God acts again in Jesus, again giving up control. And God entrusts us with welcoming God's son into the world. As John puts it, Jesus has come to his own people, but we did not accept him. But God still refuses to give up on us, still wants to give us power. And Jesus is raised from the dead so that we know that there's always a place for us, that there's always a role for us to play in God's creation. And so with this loving and empowering God who we meet in John's gospel, maybe we can interpret this word follower in a more positive light. To be a follower is the most empowering thing that we can do. To be a follower is to join God in creating and loving and caring. We see this joy of being a follower this morning in John the Baptist. John sees Jesus and sees Jesus as someone who's giving him power, giving him a role to play. And so John becomes a follower. He says, Jesus was before me and I follow. Of course, Jesus needs more followers than just John. Jesus wants to share his power with the whole world. And so Jesus continues his journey and has a remarkable exchange with two of John's friends, Andrew and Simon. Jesus tells them 
Come and see. I'm going to give you a job to do also. To be a follower is to be given work to do. And the work that Jesus has for Simon is so big that he needs a new name. Simon's name now is Peter, which means rock. Peter is now to be so powerful that he's the rock on which Jesus will build the church. All people must know that God loves them, and all people must know how powerful they are. This notion of being a follower in John's gospel does not make us mindless or weak. We're powerful, filled with God's love and with work to do. This morning, we are 2,000 years removed from the calling of these first disciples. And Jesus' church continues. And we tell our stories of how becoming a follower has given us power. Of course, the church has often failed to spread the power of God as we see in this passage. And I'm aware as I'm standing here that it's Martin Luther King Jr. weekend. And the ministry that Martin Luther King Jr. needed to do for the church is a reminder the church has often withheld power from some and preserved it for only the chosen few. But we have this morning this story of how Jesus found out, found some powerless people, simple people named John and Andrew and Simon, and gave them important work to do. And so we can tell our story. One of us will say, I've been blessed with amazing gifts, with a mind and talents, but instead of using them for myself, I think I'll use them to follow Jesus and serve someone else. Another of us might say, I might not have a job as big as Peter's, and I might never be confused with a rock. But I've got a family and some friends that I can build up. I've got a job and some employees who I lead and maybe I'll lead by empowering them. This morning we've learned that to be a follower is no small thing at all. Jesus is walking among us. He's saying, come and see. Let's listen to him and follow him. In Jesus' name, amen.